Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Ball Cabbage. I want to welcome you to the first edition of Thyroid Thursdays. As a functional medicine practitioner, chiropractor, and certified nutrition specialist, I focus in my practice on helping people recover from chronic conditions. The number one condition we help people with recover from is thyroid dysfunction. So I want to start today by explaining some of the basics of thyroid physiology, and in the coming weeks, or at least try it every week, to give you some information on thyroid physiology, and what causes thyroid physiology to break down, and how you can help your thyroid physiology. So let's start with the basics today. Every cell in your body, every cell in your body, has receptors on them for thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone, the focus of it is, is to help run the metabolism of our cells. So the more thyroid hormone we get into the cell, the better our metabolism runs. You can think of thyroid hormone like the accelerator of your car. The more thyroid hormone that gets into the cell, the faster our metabolism runs. Just like when you push down the accelerator. If you push down the accelerator of your car, you burn more fuel. You don't push on it, you don't burn much fuel. So if you're worried about fat loss and, and having lots of energy, you want to have a little bit higher metabolism. So every cell in the body has a receptor for thyroid hormone. When the cell runs low on thyroid hormone, the cells send a signal up to an area of the brain called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus then sends signals via, via production of a hormone called thyroid releasing hormone to a second gland within the brain called the pituitary gland. It's the pituitary gland that releases something called thyroid stimulating hormone, which if you've had any thyroid workup done, you've probably had your TSH levels done. That's what that stands for, thyroid stimulating hormone. It's thyroid stimulating hormone's job to go to the thyroid gland, which is this butterfly-shaped gland right in the middle of your throat, to actually stimulate the release or the production of, the production and the release of thyroid hormone. So what you'll see is there's actually two thyroid hormones that are produced, T4 and T3. T4 is the inactive form and has to actually go to other areas of the body to be converted into an active form. 93% of that thyroid hormone is inactive and needs other tissues to be activated. 7% is actually active heart hormone called T3. It is T3 then that actually goes to the cells, binds to the receptor sites, and then gets into the cells to run our metabolism. So this free T3 that's created by the thyroid can go right to this receptor site, and it has to get there though by a hormone or a protein called thyroid binding globulin. It is that thyroid binding globulin that actually then binds to the T3 carries it like an escort or a taxi cab off to the cells of the body so that that T3 can then be released and become free T3, bind to the receptor, get into the cell, and we have healthy metabolism. The other thyroid hormone, T4, must go off to a couple areas to be converted into T3. Some of that thyroid hormone is gone, goes to the liver to be converted into T3. That's about 60% of that T4. About 20% goes to the gut or the GI tract to be converted into T3. And another 20% goes off to the peripheral tissues to be converted into T3. Once these guys produce their T3, that T3 hitches a ride on that thyroid binding globulin, that car carrier or transport molecule. You can think of that as a, as a taxi cab. It carries it off to the cells, releases the thyroid hormone, that free T3 binds to the receptor, receptor gets into the cell, we've got healthy metabolism. So that's the basics of thyroid physiology. If you have hypothyroid symptoms or believe you have hypothyroid symptoms, there is something wrong in this step-by-step -step sequence. So in the coming weeks, we're going to go over all these steps in depth so you can understand how you could have the hypothyroid symptoms even though your doctor tells you you're normal how you can have hypothyroid symptoms even though your labs appear normal, and how you can have hypothyroid symptoms even though you're taking Synthroid or some other thyroid medication, why you'd still have hypothyroid symptoms. All right? So if you have any questions, put it in the comments se section below this video, and I'll be sure to get back to you. I'll see you on the next Thyroid Thursday.